Uh, hello everybody and welcome back to my video channel, my video log channel. Um, i got uh, something different I want to show you today. So this is what I've been and bought myself. It's a IMU Cruiser SE Plus, uh, 4 megapixel. Uh, all the bits and pieces, all this stuff here, look, you can look at uh, 4 megapixel, pan and tilt, full colour night vision, smart tracking, Human detection, weatherproof, motion activated spotlight, 110 dB siren, two way talk, Wi Fi enabled, cloud, micro SD, and card NVR for storage, which is pretty cool. Uh, mine's connected, um, it's not connected by the uh, Wi Fi, even though it will say on here it is, but I've actually got a network uh, thingy plugged into it, a network cable, not PoE, even though it will do that, I'm actually plugged in with the adapter and uh, the PRA, so let's click on this one and have a little look. Now, it's £59.99, uh, it's actually dragging up now. The um, I think this is, is, is trying to drag up. Why is it going so slow? Look, normally this wouldn't happen. Uh, let me just go back to the window here. Just click on the live view, it's going to make life a little bit easier. Nice and quick look. Let's get it so we've actually got some on view. There we go. Uh, that bar that you might have seen just going across the top there, that was to say that we've got to the, the, the peak of the topness. Um, just in case anybody wonders. Now, the great thing about this is the menu system is pretty easy. You click on the top right, you've got your menu down here, notifications, detection, alert system, all this sort of stuff. I've got the enhanced, i.e. AI detection. I tried it with the no plan. <laughs> Um, you could do the live view and bits and pieces and I tried it with the basic that you get 3 to 30 days and again I barely tried it for a few hours to be honest with you so I thought you know I'll splash out the £5.99 and we'll see about uh, what's it like with the AI detection now it does say when you subscribe to that that it is work in progress this is paraphrase of what it says but it's like experimental work in progress and um, you know be patient with it Everything you do sort of helps. Uh, all of the bits and pieces down here. Now, most of this I'm not really interested in showing you, um, just because there's other videos out there, and if you want me to do more comprehensive on it, I will do. But one of the things I do want to show you is this uh, detection, because there's just something on here that um, makes it a little bit mm, difficult. So we got our grid thing set up right now. And as you can see, it's pan and tilt, so it moves around for itself. Now, you can go in here and you can say, right, let's say these trees are too blowy and it keeps setting it off, an alarm on it. You can take all this out. Let's say we can just, uh, we can do like this, erase it all, nice and easy, look. That area uh, is now erased. Uh, we might want to go back into this bit, turn the eraser off, and go back and get our thing there. Then we can go save. The save's in a bit of an annoying spot, but never mind. Problem that we got when we do that is this. Now, let's say the camera is going to move to the left or the right. right it's probably not going to do it now uh, like this, but you've got to imagine that if this screen were your view, this here in this section, the top right-hand section, is the bit that is now uh, non-active. And no matter where it looks, no matter where it looks, down, left, right, that part of the screen is always going to be non-active. So let's say, for instance, these, these guys here. If the screen was pointed down slightly, because it detected them, uh, let's say it detected them coming down here and it pointed down, they're going to the non-active area. And to me, that's not very good. It's all right if it's a fixed camera. So if you've got like a bullet camera or something like that and it's fixed, that's ideal. But for this pan and tilt around, it's not going to be as good as what you might like. And I'm going to just demonstrate that again by showing you yeah in actual fact i'll do it like this because you can see that's a bit of the menu and if you click on here you got the same so if you imagine the top right hand corner here then is non-active and then i go over this way a bit uh, let's just say if i go back a bit now that uh, top right hand corner is going to be non-active so all this area here now will be non-active so it doesn't matter where it is if it's here, now this area here will be non-active. Ah, now this does happen from time to time. I think it's a little bit of a glitch. I'm glad that it's happened now, showing you, because uh, this is the sort of thing you can't really rehearse that well, because it's 
it doesn't really do it at a specific thing. Now again, if the top right hand corner was non-active, again, you'd see that um, we wouldn't be able to uh, see those people that certainly wouldn't do a detect there. Let's see if it does do a detect. This is on the recommended setting, which is number three. I've played with it on four, I've played with it on five. Problem I got with it being like that is if you have it at night, it seems to pick up so many moths and bats and bits and pieces. It doesn't seem to be detecting these guys too well. Let's just see if we can pick it up like that. Oh, come on, you're not really doing yourself much favours here on me. All right, and it didn't detect that chap going up across there. Now, the sensitivity thing is something that you have to play around with, and it's going to be dependent a little tiny bit on your on your setup, how things are. I'm um, just gonna show you there on mine, it's on three. It's on three, you could turn it up higher and it'll be more sensitive. Um, but like I say, you know, to be honest with you, I'm gonna put it back to four because I left it last night on three and it still picked up the moths, it still picked up the bats and a couple of things that look like orbs. But I'm not quite sure about orbs. I'm, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all this so it's all back again. We're going to save that. All right, and then go back to the um, to the screen here. Now I'm going to put it in this mode because I want you to see down here as well. You've got history. This is brilliant. I do like the idea that you've got the timeline on the left-hand side here. Or you can just go through these and you can just click on anyone that you like and it'll bring it up to the timeline so you get to see there, look. So when it is a little bit closer to you and a bit bigger, and it's very good, it's very good tracking. And as you can see on, well, I don't know if you can see so well, it's got like a little car emblem on there. It's got a car emblem on there as well, or emblem icon, I should say. So I click on that. And it pulls them up pretty quickly. Even though it didn't really track it, it's, you know, it was only pulling it from the top of the screen. And this is history as well. This is... Uh, when it was in that number three mode. So we can look at the history like this, and you can have a look and you can see that uh, you get AI detected vehicle, uh, human vehicle. It's not all as uh, perfect as what you might like just at the moment, because you know it's still under development. You got a security report thing is another one of the menus, which is pretty good. So you get to see, um, you actually get to see the lines around. There's a an animal there, people, a green, animal red, and the cars are blue, and you get to see that here. So person three, pet two, vehicle seventeen, package one. And you can go through the different days of that and you can see a lot 156 was the amount there. 205 was the amount there. Like I say, this has been running now for a 495 when I had it on full sensitivity for very one. So that's, you know, that, that is pretty good that you get to see those things. Of course, that's the 30th, we're not even got there yet. So as for menus, there's plenty to go through. There's plenty to set up. One of the things I really do like about this, and I've got a ring front doorbell thing. And even though this has cost me five ninety nine a month, it would be cheaper if I did it on a yearly plan. But I just wanted to test it out for the month. You know, I just wanted to see what it was like on the AI uh, Plus scheme. This has got what my front door camera doesn't have, and I'm quite disappointed with that because this has. Um, I'm disappointed with the front door camera, not this, but this has got a record facility, which means whatever's going on on that screen, you can see there's a timer for it there. Uh, it's recording and that's great and it will save it to here which is great as well because it will tell you that you can tap to view in local files and I'll show you where the local files are in a second but you can tap to view there and if I just go into uh, I think it's this menu here actually uh, you're going to get to see where you're saved here on the cloud this is the little icon for the cloud and here you've got an SD card where you can save as well if you want to keep it on SD card of course you can always always use an MVR which is the uh, network video recorder but if we go back to here and I'm just going to quickly show you these favorites before I forget you got some features here and one of the things I've asked for because there's a nice little system in here where you can actually communicate with the people 
um, one of the things I've asked for is this favourites. You see that active area? If you could have, like, say, your favourites, and let's say these were all blowing around and it kept triggering it, if you could have, you could, you're only allowed six favourites at this minute in time, only allowed six favourites. But if you could have it, so you could have a profile, one favourite, one active area, one favourite, one active area. One, at least then you could set the camera to go to a specific place and it would ignore that there. And when it changed to another favourite, it would ignore whatever that profile was for the active area on the favourite. I think that would work really well for the time being. And get around some of this uh, but, um, bit where if, if I, let's say, go to the window here, just click on there, if I go here, if I go to the right here, and quite often a car can come down this area and trigger this, but then I end up on the right here. Look, you can tap this, or you can use the jog thing and hold it on there and it will go more fluently. This area can be quite um, active. As you see, it's a lot of like loose, leafy, branchy type things, quite, quite active, and it can get stuck there. But if I were to get rid of this on the active area, the zoning part, everywhere that that camera looked, this area of the screen will be non-active, which makes that quite a difficult thing to live with, to be honest with you, and it does quite often do that, it has been. Um, but I'm hoping, because I've communicated with them about it, and they've told me that somebody is going to get back to me, that they might uh, be developing that. Because this is, I've, when you first set up, you do an update on your firmware, and then there's an option, uh, you find it somewhere about which GUI you're going to be using. And I don't know quite where that is on here. There could be more. But these are, this is one of the... Um, one of the menus as well so you go into your top menu click on the top right there and then you can go into the more into this menu and you can see look you can uh, encrypt your the um, going from the camera to your um, connected to the um, router encrypt it to and from there it does say actually if you want to do that that it might uh, transmission channels here yeah, for data but uh, it says that uh, however it might influence the device performance. So I've just left mine off, I don't really care at the moment. You can reboot the device, uh, you can leave feedback, which is what I did. You can leave feedback and you can upload up to 100 megabytes files, which is pretty good because there's a lot of these files, only 30 seconds, they're only like a one meg. So you can upload stuff to show them what the issue is. Email address to get back to you. I do like that, that that's built in. And um, yeah, I mean, there is a load of things on here that you can go over. Look, it says my wide area network is actually my Virgin Media account um, information for the Wi-Fi, but it's not. It's actually connected by the LAN, um, which is fine. Uh, HDR, which is nice. So you don't get all that blowout stuff in the backgrounds. Uh, yeah, so there's a whole bunch. And, you know, if I haven't said it, I'll say it now. This is a £159 camera. Uh, sorry, $59.99 in the UK. You can get this from eBay, from AliExpress, all these different places, and I think it's great for the money. I think to play around with it and to get used to it and have it in an environment like here, if anything was coming in now, it would track it. Not a problem. It would track it. We can go look at some of the history, and you can see down here, uh, I'll show you some stuff from at night, actually. Because that'd be uh, that'd be pretty good. So you can click all the way down here. And you can see how more active it is. Where was that? In the night times. This is uh, this is what time is that? That's three fifty one. Okay, I think that on the right hand side then was a spider's web or something like that. But let's do it here to. Uh, we we'll just click onto this one fifty eight. So you can just click onto it where you see it. And have a little look and just see what it's like. So that was a bat, I think, flying past. This is what it's like. There's no street lights on, apart from these over here by the by the road. And there's a roundabout there, so they keep the lights on. But there's no street lights down here or to the right. And this is the infrared doing its thing. You can either have it on infrared so it detects some, it'll put spotlights on as well. It's got two lights on there. And uh, you can have a siren go off if you want it to. I don't have any of those. I just like it to yeah, see what it can 
see what you can see. That one there was actually marked up with a car, so I wonder if we're going to get to see a car moving on this. That looked like a bat. It seems to have a bit of a wingspan on it. And this is some of the things it picks up. Um, on the first night I had it, I left it on number five for sensitivity, and it was just off all over the place. It seemed like any, anything it could pick up. So this one says it's got a human on there, and it's got a car. I'm not saying, oh, this is going to be great for its, sense, for its um, tracking and stuff, and there is some definite playing around and some to do in with it. But to be honest with you, all in all, I think it's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to have some like great fun with it still, uh, get it to do what I want it to, which is basically look out for foxes and the badges that we have and the munjacks that we have going past. And uh, yeah, but as things get a bit more, uh, like if I just click straight onto that, it will take me straight through to that nice and quickly. And I'll see, uh, see my neighbour going out which is all good, you get to see how it can track. It's got an eight times digital zoom, not optical. So the digital zoom, yeah, the digital zoom doesn't work too bad, but you're not gonna get it to be as um, pure as the optical zoom. But still, you know, for 59.99 in the UK, you can get, like I said, AliExpress, get a little bit cheaper. This came from imu underscore official um, on eBay and uh, and I'm happy, I'm happy that the 59.99 was not too, um, you know, not too overpriced. They're updating the software, the firmware, the AI is updating and doing as it goes along. There's a new model of this out. This is the Cruiser 2 SE, which is a newer model of the Cruiser here, but now they've got a Cruiser. Sorry, this is a Cruiser SE Plus, but now they've also got a Cruiser 2, which, um, over these is it's got smaller antenna and bits and pieces. There you go guys, it's a long video, 17.2. If you want me to go through the other stuff on there and go through bit by bit, let me know and we'll see what we can do on there. But just for now, that's what we got. And uh, I hope you might have learned something from it. If it's been a help for somebody, uh, brilliant stuff. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.